Okay, it's time to look at some weird examples. Some weird, now, if humans are engaging in, if humans are creating the selective pressure, then it's considered artificial selection. Some examples of artificial selection. First of all, did you know that all of these plants are actually the same species? Kohlrabi? Has anyone ever eaten that? Brussels sprouts? Okay, first of all, Brussels, don't Brussels sprouts make you think of little cabbages? And don't they kind of taste like broccoli? It's because they're all the same plant. Cabbages, cauliflowers, don't cauliflower and broccoli kind of taste the same? Broccoli and kale, all of it is the same plant. It came from some crazy mustard plant. And then a human was like, I really want a big stem from my mustard plant and took the seeds from the bigger stemmed mustards and then planted those and then took the biggest mustard stemmed seeds and planted those and then from those took the biggest mustard stem seed you get the idea and pretty soon we have this incredible like diversity of different broccoli foods and we made them we created that diversity. Okay, let's talk about the dog. I mean, there's really no words. Like, uh, what? Clearly, there there is no evolutionary advantage for pretty much any of these things. They would get absolutely destroyed in the wild. This is the wolf from whence they came. And I, I, I mean, it's pretty unbelievable how we ended up with what we ended up with in the world of doggies. And that's our, an example of artificial selection. <laughs> what, what, what can I say about dreadlock dog? Poor dreadlock dog. This is a real dog and he really has dreadlocks. And that's not, like, that's a species of dog that we've created that has all those dreadlocks. Like, isn't he hot? I'm sorry, dreadlock dog. That's artificial selection gone crazy. Might just get a little bit crazier. What is that? <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> that, I think that's a bunny. Is it? Look, there's this little bunny nose and bunny. I think those are little bunny ears. That's like the bunny madness. Okay, I would take one of those, but I feel really sorry for that thing because <laughs> somewhere in there is bunny. And then, of course, like those are all human created, but then there's like, what? This thing, the proboscis monkey, this. Is an, this is not artificial selection. We did not do that. We are not responsible. He can honk with that thing and make all sorts of cool noises and guess what the ladies think. Whew, look at his nose. Mighty fine, mighty fine. All the bigger your nose, the more the ladies like you. I wonder what that has to do with parasites. I don't know. But that is an example of sexual selection. We don't know, is there a reproductive um, success or advantage bestowed by this phenomenal nose? Or is it maybe parasite related? Or is it just that the ladies like it? Um, but sometimes we're unclear about that. That's an example of sexual selection. We talked about the peacock already as an example of sexual selection. Um, any sexual dimorphism, anytime the male critter looks different from the female critter, you probably have an example of sexual selection going on because the one critter is trying to be more attractive to the opposite sex. Here are some other, like, very lovely examples of characteristics that provide reproductive advantage. And you look at those characteristics and you think, I really am not sure how that can help you survive better. Um, and however, p 
part of survival. Part of the whole picture is making more babies. So if somehow a characteristic lets you make more babies, it kind of really doesn't matter what else that characteristic does. It's kind of worth it because um, then you get to pass on your genes. All right. Mechanisms of evolution, you've got a bunch of them. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about speciation and we're going to look at, at big changes, like how could we possibly end up with different species from these kinds of processes that we see. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.